evening, gang. It's Tuesday, the 25th of April 2017. Yes, it's a late night chat tonight, boys and girls. Bit of a late night in the chat. Now, do tell me nice and early on if the audio and the video are somehow out of sync, because I might have a chance to do something about it if you tell me early enough. Do you know what I mean? So just a quick message to say, oh, actually, the video and the audio are looking looking out a bit. Then do let me know that way, you know. You know, don't don't just sit there and put up with it. Because I do like to try and do it as professionally as possible. I really do. Good evening, boys and girls. Uh, Vectis is already first in with the messages today, aren't you, Vectis? Who says, hurry up, it's past my bedtime. What, like 10 to 10 at night? What time do people go to bed on the Isle of Wight then? I thought my sister was bad enough. She's in bed at nine o'clock, my sister. And my niece. I think my younger nephew, he's up till all hours. He sits on one of those very boring computer games. I don't know what it is, a War of Worlds or X Station Box, PlayStation 2017 and Sixpence or something like that. I don't know what he plays, dear. He just sits in that bedroom house on end with a little speaker thing on like that and... Um, uh, mistake on the date. 25th of April, isn't that what I said? 25th of April? What did I say? Hang on a minute, I've got... What, what's 25th of April? Didn't I say 25th of April, Craig? What did I say then? Are you sure? Uh, yes, yeah, so Vectis, uh, wakey wakey, do try and stay awake. Mark's off to karaoke, have a nice time tonight, Mark, uh, Craig's with us. And uh, young Ian Ellis is with us this evening, boys and girls. Ian Ellis has uh, provided... One of our little Facebook updates for this evening, boys and girls. We always have a, 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 a look at a couple of interesting Facebook updates. And I think a, a little bit... Oh, what's the word? Oh, I can't think of the word now. Um, not condescending, not criticising. Con... con oh, what, what is it where you say one thing and it goes the other... Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, Ian Ellis's Facebook status update today. And he says, while I cook my boy's lamb for his late dinner, because he's got a lovely dog. Oh, he's got a lovely dog. While I cook my boy's lamb for his late dinner, I'm enjoying a large glass of Provence. Peace and love to all animals. Well, what about the lamb? It's dead. How can that be bringing in peace and love to lambs, dear? It's dead. <laughs> so it's not peace and lamb to all, love to all animals, is it? The lamb is dead, dear. It's like my sister. When I was up in, um, uh, visiting my sister up in Lincolnshire last week, you know, where they had lamb on Sunday. I remember being there, watching the meat lamb while I sat there quietly. I had my nice corn pie. Very tasty. And no animals were harmed in the subject of the corn pie. There it is, a dead animal on the th disguised as meat. No, it's not meat. It's a dead animal, dear. It's a dead lamb. And then just a few days later, we decided to take a walk in uh, the fields which are near her. She lives in some beautiful countryside. I mean, she's in a village, a little place called Woodhall Spa in Lincolnshire. But you've only got to go minutes out and you are in the middle of fields. Um, I particularly like an area known as Horncastle up there. Now, that is stunning. And you can get some lovely, you can get great big property. I mean, £200,000. My God, what you could have with that up there, dear. You know, an acre of land, probably, and, and these fields. I walked through these fields with rapeseed either side along a river, and it was just beautiful. Just beautiful. Anyway, so a couple of days later, uh, my sister and I and uh, George. George is my niece's little boy, who's four years old at the moment. And apparently I, and I quote, annoy him. I... <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting at this dinner table having some chips. Uh, I had baked beans at chips. They had dead animals and chips of one form and another, like sausages and things like that. And um, I, I like to uh, I like to muck about with with my niece's children, just as I did with them, my, with my niece and nephews. I used to muck about something chronic with them. I think my sister did say to me, "Why do you teach them these?" Because I would teach them stupid things to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, I'm afraid. Stupid. And now, of course, I'm doing it to their children. And uh, George, who's four years old, he was sitting at the table. I can't remember what I was doing. Maybe flicking chips at him or something like that. What was I doing? I can't remember now. Uh, oh, I think he had a couple of toys on, the, on his table while he's eating his dinner. And I kept nicking them. 
and he would grab him back. And I would nick him again and he would grab him back. And all of a sudden he says, you're annoying me, Chris. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, that was another. Before we got to the chip place, we'd gone for a walk a couple of days earlier uh, through these fields. And there were all the lovely sheep and the lambs. And my sister's, oh, look at all the little lambs. Aren't they lovely? Well, I just gave her that disapproving look. Do you ever do that to anyone? A disapproving look. Can you do a disapproving look? Go on, have a go now. A disapproving look. Here it comes again. Are you ready? Like that. I do that as pe people in the street sometimes. Actually, an awful lot of them. I gave a disapproving look to two mothers the other day. Coming down the path with two prams, one next to each other. Me on a bike. No, they weren't going to get out of the way, were they? Ha! Neither did I. I got so close to her. And I heard her do that kiss between the teeth. You know the sort. The hair tied right back like that. Great big fat things they were. Walking along with prams. Get out of my way. I got a buggy. No, I don't think so. Get over to the side, you silly old bag. No, thank you. Anyway, back to the lambs. Oh, what lovely little lambs. And I'm like, well, you've just eaten one on Sunday. Oh, don't say that in front of him. Why? He needs to know the truth, dear. Dead animals, dear. Dead animals. So thank you for that, Ian, that wonderful status update that I was able to use today. Animal lover. When he's sitting there chopping up bits of lamb for his dog. God's sake, man. Don't it like carrots? You can get some lovely dog's dinners made out of carrots and peas. I'm sure you can, Ian. All right. He loves his dog, don't you? You've got a beautiful dog. Thank you, Ian, for that one. And there's another one here this morning uh, I've noticed. Um, you always know. That... Oh, hang on a minute. I've lost it. Where's that blooming gone? Oh. oh, you know why I've lost it? That's Adam's fault. That's Adam's fault because I clicked on something that Adam sent me and now I've lost it. Basically, it was it was something this woman. Oh, what was her name? Can't remember. Her Facebook update was she'd bought these new earrings. So um, her little girl said to her, what? Oh, what, what are they in your ear? Oh, they're my new earrings. Don't you th don't you like them? And she's, no. Like, it was a bit like that. I can't remember now. How annoying is that? It's your fault, Adam, for giving me information. I was overloaded with information, dear. Overloaded. God's sake. Let's say hello to some of our early viewers with us this evening, boys and girls. Hello to... One moment, please. Uh, yes, Ian says, Milo, that's his dog's name, Milo rules me with an iron paw. Bang, like that. Although dogs are not as bad as cats, are they? You know, we run around after our cats. I've got to tell you, as, as regular viewers of the show will know, uh, I've got a very elderly cat who's very incontinent now. Um, all over the kitchen, basically. As the, the, the whole kitchen floor is covered in newspapers and puppy pads. I bought some puppy pads, which seemed to do a quite a good job. Um, and I did... She's got a growth here now, which I think has gone into her mouth. And I had had an appointment with the vet uh, for tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. But, you know, I was looking at her last night and again uh, this afternoon, and I thought, no, I don't think she's ready yet. Do you know what I mean? She's got still some life in her yet, I think. And um, uh, she, she seemed very relaxed today. And she quite likes... What I've started doing now is whenever I... I mean, not every single time, but whenever I go down the... If I go into the kitchen every few hours, I pick her up and put her outside for half an hour. And I've noticed she then goes to the wee or poo out there. And the last two nights, there's been no mess at all. Right? I just want to point out, it's not the mess... That's bothering me. It's the thing on her mouth. But she don't she don't seem to be too bothered by that at the moment. So I'll leave it. Last night, so I, so I cancelled the appointment. Not going to the vet tomorrow. Uh, I don't know. You may, maybe you think I've done a wrong thing. Perhaps I should have gone. But I'll leave it a little bit longer and um, see how she gets on with this, with this thing. But I have a feeling that I should really go in with that, you know. Maybe I'll do it next week. Maybe I'll take her in next week. But I don't want them to say, well, there's nothing we can do. Do you know what I mean? But I think that's what they're going to say. That's the thing. But she's not going tomorrow. So good news there. Katie lives to survive another day. I'm very pleased at saying. Funny thing is, last night when I got in from work, uh, I had a, a fantastic karaoke night last night. 
Uh, I do karaoke at Central Station every Monday, 8 till 11.30 with cheap drinks. And Fridays on 8.30 to uh, midnight. And uh, excellent night last night. Really was very, very good. Uh, it was slightly quieter than it was normally, which meant everyone got to sing three songs last night. And, and that's that's about nice. That's nice. If you can get a song in every hour, I think that's a nice night. You know, we had, I think, about 20 singers last night. So they had about one song an hour. Uh, once you start getting to 25, I mean, 30 is impossible because then they all start complaining. Oh, but I put my song in two hours ago. Yeah, but there's two hours worth of songs in front of you. I'm sorry. That's how it is. People do get very upset. They don't understand the needs of others, you know, <clears throat> and you're the bloke in the middle trying to sort it all out so it is as fair as possible. Um, so that was a very, very good night last night uh, for the uh, for the karaoke. Um, and I got back. No cat. Where's the cat? And she's she's shut when I'm not here. She is shut in in the kitchen in an area, not the whole kitchen, an area of the kitchen. Um, and that's where she goes. Well, she wasn't there. And I thought, oh, my God. And I thought, well, she can't have got out. I've looked everywhere. I've gone out the back. I thought, surely I haven't left her out in the garden all the time I've been at work because it was cold last night. And I thought, oh, you know, I had visions of me seeing a shivering cat. So I went outside with a torch. No, no cat anyway. This would be about uh, about half past 12, one o'clock in the morning. So I've gone out the front. Maybe she'll go out the front somehow, looking everywhere. No, nothing there either. So I then got up my the videos to my video cameras, which records any move, any movement that happens. And all I saw were a couple of other cats and foxes walking past the front door. Birds set off the cameras where if I get a magpie comes down, then they set off the cameras when it starts recording them. And it's funny. Um, so I remember Ronnie when I was away on holiday last week, my mate was looking after the cat and he said she hid behind the washing machine. Well, I mean, washing machines, you could, you can move them, but they're bloody awkward to move, aren't they? Aren't they heavy things they are? And also, I didn't want to make a noise because my neighbours. Now, the walls here are quite thick. You never hear anything from my neighbour. I've never heard a single thing from any of my neighbours along here. Aren't we lucky? You know, you see some of these programmes on the telly. Neighbours from hell. Perhaps you're one of those, are you, lovey? Are you a neighbour from hell? I bet you are. I bet Ian Ellis is. I bet that dog barks all day and all night. The neighbours are banging on the wall, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You get off, get off mate. Get off. <laughs> but I've got fantastic neighbours. I've never heard anything from them. And it would mortify me if they heard anything from me. So many of these people that I'll turn my music up if I want to. No, I think they're dreadful, ghastly people, aren't they? Aren't they awful people? They don't give a toss about anyone, do they? Uh, it, would, I, it would mortify me if I'd made noise and it had woken or disturbed my neighbour at any time of the day. Anyway, so I carefully kind of moved the washing machine out a bit. And what I did, I got my mobile phone, turned the light on and switched the video. And I, I held it and sort of moved it around a little bit like that. Um, that reminds me of that Indian dancing. You know that pa pan, pan, oh, what's that called? Panjab? Panjab, Panjab dancing. They go like that, don't they? Like they're changing light bulbs. What's all that about? Ding, 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 ding. I love it. Bangra music. Have you ever heard Bangra music in a club? I have. Now, what's the name of that for uh, uh, the night that I know? I've, I have seen it. Anyway, Bangra music is fantastic. And it's like this dancing with like changing light bulbs. Ding, 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 ding. It is fan. I've been to an, I've seen a Asian, I don't know if it's a Pakistani or Indian wedding, but I've seen one of those. Oh my God, the colours are fantastic. And all the women are just so beautiful. beautiful. Have you ever seen an Indian or Pakistani wedding? I don't know which, which is which or whether they might be very similar to themselves, but they have these beautiful colours and the music. Bing, nin, 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 and the light bulb changing as well. Oh, it's fab. I would love to go to an Asian Indian wedding. Uh, if, if anyone's going to offer me to come to one of those, I would love to come to one of those. Thank you very much. Yes. Anyway, back to the story. So uh, I've got my camera out and I'm doing it that way. And then I did it behind the dishwasher. Oh, well, we have dishwasher as well. I've got everything there. I've got everything here. Everything. What do I need? Don't need to leave the house. 
washing machine, dishwasher, new new oven downstairs, which is working marvellously. Got my hob. I've just had my dinner before I come up to talk to you today. Spaghetti arababata with a little, tiny little bit of smidgen of cheese on top. I haven't had any pudding yet. I've got some ice cream in the fridge I might have after the show today. Uh, so I'm twisting this round, you know, I'm filming that and filming that so I don't have to move the thing back. And um, then I got the phone and I watched it back. I couldn't see, couldn't see a cat anywhere. And I looked at the fridge. I thought, she can't be behind the fridge. You know, it's too small a gap between the, the back of the fridge and the wall. Um, so I spent some time looking for her last night, front, back, behind the fridge and everywhere. I couldn't find her anywhere. Anyway, eventually I went to bed and uh, I thought, I'm not going to be able to sleep. However, I did sleep. And what did I dream about? The cat being lost. Honestly, I dreamt about Katie the cat being lost last night. And um, after, shortly after you wake up from, a, from even a very vivid dream, you tend to forget it, don't you? If you ever want to remember a dream, you've got to write it down the moment you wake up. Don't leave it 10 minutes because it's gone. And all I can remember is people, someone was searching for the cat. Uh, I think it might have been my sister. I think it might have been my sister in the dream. And they found the cat and brought it back and all, all was good again. And then I woke up. There was some a lot more to the dream than that. But that was basically it. And I woke up. I thought, oh, good. And then I could hear, or at least I thought I could hear. I might have been still partly in a dream. Uh, I thought I could hear some knocking. Like that. Right. Now, Katie, in her area of the kitchen... She has a little wooden stool. It's a lovely stool that uh, when my mum died, I bought, I bought this back with me. And it was made by a blind person, this stool. And it's, it's like, it's very solid, wooden. None of this MI, MFI crap, dear. None of that, love. You know, this would be John Lewis. This would absolutely like my John Lewis mattress topper. Oh, you need one of those, dear. £160. Thank you very much. Well, we give you the most comfortable sleep ever. You need a John Lewis downproof mattress topper. Look it up. Look it up. Anyway, uh, so this stool is like, I, I should have brought it up, really. It's wooden. And on the top, it's like all different coloured plastic bits uh, crisscrossing like that. I'll show it to you one day. I will show it. And that's what she sleeps on top of. But... The floor in the kitchen is slate. It's slate tile. So it's not quite quite, um, quite level. And if she moves around, it, it knocks on the floor. You know, not loud. but And I swear I could hear that. I thought, oh, she's back. Oh, I can sleep all right now. But of course I couldn't. You know, oh, maybe I should go down. Oh, I don't want to get out of bed because it was cold last night. Oh, it's cold tonight, isn't it? Isn't it cold tonight? I've had to put the heating on again. Oh, G Energy, my energy supplier, will be very pleased about that, lovey. I thought I'd turned it off now until December. I've had to turn the heating on again. God's sake, man. Um, uh, and I'm tossing and turning. I thought, oh, I can't. And I'm going to have to go downstairs. So I went downstairs. Like, Katie, no, nowhere to be seen. So what was making the noise? Because, of course, the noise had stopped by now, wouldn't it? No cat to be seen. Oh, God. So I went back to bed. This time I had trouble getting back to sleep, but I did eventually. And um, I woke up about eight o'clock in the morning. Back, no, about half past seven I woke up this morning. I keep waking up really early now. Half seven, quarter to eight. But that's OK, because I get more done then. I like it. I'd rather be up early uh, and have an, a, a, a couple of hours in the afternoon, as I always have done. But it, I seem to be having a little bit longer sleep in the afternoon, making up for the getting up early, you see. Um, so, uh, I got up about half past seven, uh, I woke up about half seven, I, I put the telly on in the, in the, in the, in the bedroom, put the news on, BBC News 24, breakfast time, breakfast time. It's never been the same since Frank Boff left, I'm sorry dear, you know, and Selena Scott as well. Went downstairs, put the kettle on, looked around, and there she is, sitting there in front of the fridge. You know, like nothing had happened. Now, the cat, I believe, is quite deaf. And quite probably quite blind as well. And she doesn't really notice you until you touch her on the back. And then she then she makes her little noise. Like that. Not not a scared noise. And she turns around and receives the strokes and does does the does the does the rubbing of the head. So there she was. You know, where had she been? I don't know. 
I don't know. She can't have been out. So she must have been hiding. It's such a small area. I can't understand why I couldn't find the blooming thing, dear. <laughs> Arva then pulled everything else. And there was no mess. No mess again. So uh, immediately I picked her up. And what I do is I open the back door. I put her out in the garden. I put some food down. She'll eat the food. And then start wandering around the garden. And I think she does her defecating out there somewhere in the garden there. Because it's been quite clean for the last two days. I haven't had to change the newspaper at all. The people up at the train station where I nick all the metros from to put down for the cat now are very pleased not to have seen me for a couple of days. <laughs> so that's the cat news, boys and girls. All right, that's the cat news. Um, Craig says, on your green screen. I haven't got green screen, Craig. What are you going on about now? Why do people send messages and it don't make sense, does it? What green screen is there? What can can anyone work out what he's going on about? Green screen. What green? Are well, you talking about that thing? Is that what you're going on about? Uh, mistake on your date. Second, Chris. Where? Where's the mistake? What green screen are you going on about? Oh, dear me. Um, Gustav says, oh, my God, I never got a notification that international superstar and television personality, Mr. Chris Reardon, was beaming not only to the UK, but the world. No notification. Oh, you want to check your settings there, dear? That's a bit worrying, isn't it? We need every viewer that we can get. Can we have more viewers, please? Thank you, those of you that shared the show to your wall. This is much greatly appreciated. It's very kind of you to do so. Uh, Joe is with us. Are you well, Chris? Yes, I am well. I've been on a little trip today. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, Ian says, you've got a point, but he only eats fresh meat and I cook twice a day, a.k.a. Milo's personal chef. Ian, don't try and teach your dog. That, that is, of course, a joke for you, my darling. Uh, don't try and teach your dog to be vegetarian. It doesn't work. They become very ill, actually. Uh, someone tried to do that with a cat once and nearly lost the cat. You can't do it with animals. You really can't. Uh, my mum used to cook for the dog, for her dog all the time, years ago. Oh, yes. <laughs> it always amused me, actually. She'd be doing the dog like a pork chop or a bit of, bit of chicken or something like that. And then the dog would go and down it would go and this little dog. Went, I, I never got on with her dog. Don't know why it didn't like me and I didn't like it. <laughs> it was a King Charles Cavalier. Lovely little thing it was, actually. It made my mum and dad very happy. Um, but uh, it didn't like me for some reason. And she'd do it all this food, and then she'd sit there and eat a salad herself or a bowl of soup, you know. And that's nice. That is a nice thing to do, though, again. It really is. Uh, good afternoon to Wayney. You started early. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, about two minutes early. That's right, yeah. What's the problem with that? It does say approximately, doesn't it? We're never to time, dear. We're never to... I'm always early, Wayney, as you know, for work. Always on time and early. Yes. Ian T's with us as well tonight. Hello, Ian. Um, Vectis says, can I go to bed now or will I miss anything? Yes, of course you'll miss something. There's always something to be missed on this programme, dear. I can't believe you're going to bed at 10 o'clock. Oh, hang on. Are you on the bins tomorrow? Do you get up at like about four o'clock for that, don't you? OK, well, you'll have to watch the recording later. And make sure you do, Vectis, because questions will be asked to you tomorrow about today's show. So I'll know whether or not you've uh, been watching or not, my son. All right. Good afternoon to Daniel Rolf. Daniel is down in Camberley, just down the road from me. Um, ben, uh, good afternoon to Colin, who's with us uh, tonight. Hello, Colin. Uh, Alan Carruthers. Hello, Alan. Elaine in Israel with us. Terry H is there up in Leeds. John Lauder says you don't half take a long time to tell a story. Well, it's a long story, John. It's a long story, dear. That's why it takes a long time. I'm reading a new book, actually, John. And, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it'd be like this, you know. Here's the book, right? Right? So what you're saying is this, right? Let me just open a page randomly. The second episode of Life and Death was a masterclass in editing. Right. That's the story. What's it about? Exactly, dear. You see, if I don't tell the old story, you won't get the old thing, will you? No. Of course it takes a long time, dear. Um, Rod Brown's with us tonight. Hello, Rod. 
uh, Jack and Ori, Wayne. I remember Jack and Ori. Jack and Ori. I used to love that Jack and Ori. Jack and Ori. Jack and Ori. Jack and Ori. Da, da. And then Blue Peter was on after that, wasn't it? With proper presenters, dear. Peter Purvis, John Noakes, and, and we bow down in her holy name, Val. Valerie Singleton. We love Val. She's not on the telly anymore, is she? She did do this money programme for a while, didn't she? Uh, Vectis is up at 4.45 in the morning. We'll go to sleep then and stop moaning, will ya? I mean, I may give away a big prize later, Vectis, but don't worry about that. You go to sleep. It says in the Bible, and you can ask Shania this, dear. You know, Jesus said that you shouldn't fall asleep while he was doing his stuff. Yes. And I'm saying the same thing, dear. Something might happen, but if you want to go to sleep, that's fine. That's fine by me. Don't worry about that. Zach's with us. Hello to Zach. Hi, Chris. I've missed you. How are you? I'm very well tonight, Zach. I'm very pleased to be able to talk to you. I can only do these late night shows because I gave up a couple of nights working. And I love it, dear. We need a nightly show every week. I think I'd do better than that dreadful programme on ITV, The Nightly Show. Isn't that on now? Who's doing it this week? <laughs> they haven't even got a regular presenter, have they? Good evening to Chris Pina Eccles. Hello, my darling. Oh, I miss our fun that we used to have when we went out late on a Saturday night. How much fun was that, my dear? Do you remember me giving you a lift home in my Land Rover? Oh, yes. Rolling, rolling, rolling down the river. Well, not down the river, down Chinatown, I think it was we were, weren't we? Uh, good evening to Angela Washington. Oh, Angela, you're not the Palladium either, are you, my love? No, I was offered a ticket tonight to go to the Palladium to see, um, was it tonight at the Palladium? They were recording the, the one that Barry Manilow is going to be in. Looks like we made it. Ha, oh, ha, Yes. But unfortunately, I couldn't go because I'd been out all morning. Uh, I was supposed to be out the whole day, but it actually turned out only the morning and the afternoon. I'll tell you about that a little bit later on. OK, so I've been out all morning. Excitement on the train tonight. I'll tell you later. Tell you later. Or this afternoon, tell you later. Um, Adam's with us. Adam the plumber's there. Evening, Adam. Um, Chris says, never fall asleep while someone is doing their stuff. Oh, Chris. I went to this lovely little place in Waterloo that you may have heard of, lovely. And um, someone actually fell asleep there. I couldn't believe it. Someone actually fell asleep on the top of the bus. Dreadful. Dreadful. <laughs> that is true, that is, Chris. That is true. Um, good. Well, there we are, then. Uh, there's a phone number. If you want to call in tonight, we can open the phone number, OK? There it is. Now, you don't have to call in. I don't worry too much about uh, not receiving phone calls, but it's there if you want to call in at any point of anything we're chatting about today. Phone number's open, OK? 020-814-3477. It's a local London number. Uh, if you've got Skype, my Skype name is, all one word as well, uh, just a minute, United Kingdom Talk. So United Kingdom Talk is the Skype name. And 020-814-3477 is the phone number. Let me have a sip of this. And we'll carry on, my darlings. We'll carry on. Um, where are we? I wanted to read out some of the messages you sent in a previous show a couple of days ago. Uh, which I completely messed out. Wendy, Wendy, who's uh, she's one of the people at the Palladium tonight. London Palladium. Now, so I was offered a free ticket to that by lovely Rosemary for the Palladium. But do you know, it takes them all day to record that show. They had to be at the Palladium this afternoon for 12 o'clock. And they were there until night. I don't know what time it finishes, but I haven't heard from any of them yet. So presumably they could they could still they must have just come out. But it's an all day thing recording that one hour show. You know, I couldn't believe it. I thought you just went in and the show happened for an hour and that was it. No. So I was offered this ticket. The only thing is I had to be at the London Palladium for 12 o'clock and it went on all day and all night. Don't know what time it finishes. Perhaps we'll get a bit of an update that of on the uh, on the next show. We'll find out how long that takes. Anyway, Wendy loves the new picture behind me, which you can buy on eBay for 20 quid. That was 20 quid, that picture. It's nice, isn't it? Beautiful, that is. 
Um, we were talking about Caster on Sea. I'm going on holiday shortly to Caster on Sea. I've got a uh, Caster on Sea. I've uh, got a caravan holiday with my nephew and his little family in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's in Nor Great Yarmouth. It's north of Great Yarmouth. So thank you for that. And uh, Ray Reynolds says Caster is not so far as Cleethorpes. And it's just a little north of Great Yarmouth. Caster Holiday Camp became the home of soul R&B weekenders, as well as rock and roll. Our friend, Tony Blackburn, who rung me the other week, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Tony Blackburn has appeared there as well. Robbie Vincent, Chris Hill and Froggy. Remember Robbie Vincent? Do you remember the Robbie Vincent telephone programme on BBC Radio London in the 80s? That was an excellent show. Uh, Ray also says, so take some fave raves. We used to play like the birdie song and Agadoo. Agadoo, do, do, push my apple, shake your tree or something like that. And the birdie song. Remember doing that at weddings? I bet they don't do that now. Oh, it was so much fun at weddings in the 80s. Birdie song, Agadoo, the locomotion. Oh, yes. What do they do now? They They do Beyonce. You know, drunk in love. And you get all these little girls like that. It's not the same, is it? Life is just not fun anymore. It's not. Well, it is if you come to one of my nights. I don't do serious, as you well know. Uh, my sister says she loves my pussy light. Do you like my pussy light? This was sent to me by the lovely Eloise in the US of A. Look at my pussy light. Here, pussy, pussy. You like my pussy light, don't you? Oh, let's have another camera angle, shall we? Because we can do that. Look at that. Look at that. How marvellous. Uh, Gustav says, darling, how wonderful to have you back live beaming to the nation. Have to say, though, normally people come back from a holiday looking younger, fresher and more relaxed. What happened? I don't look too bad, do I? Oh, dear. I think Uncle Chris was a tiny bit knackered playing with the nieces and nephews. Oh, that's not that's not far from the truth, I must say. Oh, I was, I had a banging headache one day, although it wasn't then. I'd been walking around in the sun. And my sister says, because I've not got much hair now, the sun, I've got to be very careful of sunstroke. And that's, I think I had sunstroke one day. I did, I'm going to have to wear a hat. But I don't want to like, you know, a hat with like a, like a, like um, what's it, like a cap with, I mean, what's all that about? I, I don't understand. You know, when you see um, Donald Trump on the telly, not only him, that the other presidents do it. Presidents of the United States. And they wear a baseball cap, dear. We don't see that anywhere else in the world. I mean, you couldn't see Theresa May wearing a baseball cap or, or a pair of trainers, couldn't you? you? You just wouldn't see it. But they do that, the American presidents do. Don't get that at all. I mean, for God's sake, man. If you're at that person of authority you've got to dress nice haven't you oh lewis who's um one of the barmen at uh, central station said to me last night i dressed really well isn't that nice what nice thing does someone say that i dress well um graham says my dog was very much like your cat condition when she got older she lived to 18 years old but eventually the inevitable decision had to be made after several times of the vet all very sad but it was uh, for the best yeah you, you, you do have to do the best for the pet you really do have to do the best for your pet. But, um, and I think I, I would know. I will know. I don't think it's quite time yet, you know. I don't think it's quite time for her yet. She's she's not struggling that much yet. I don't think so, anyway. Uh, Mary also says on the subject of the cat, it's really tough call, but at the end of the day, you don't want them to suffer anymore. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You don't want little cats to suffer, do you? Eh? Absolutely not, no. Good. Um, some more of your messages then coming through on today's show. Uh, Ray Reynolds is with us. Ah, Ray's there. We are just talking about you then, Ray. Have you only just joined us? Ah, well, you won't know what I said then, will you, my love? No. What was I saying about you, Ray? That's the question. <laughs> Alan Russell's there. Hello, Alan. Uh, Wayne says, Chris, I think you need more multi-camera angles for your karaoke live. Ah, possible, but quite a lot of work involved there. Um... To go to a to a venue and string up loads of cameras every time, that's just not going to happen, I don't think. You, you'd have to have some way of leaving them there, I think. You would. Kevin Webster says, did you go and see um, uh, Barry? 
Uh, yes, indeed. No, no, not at the Palladium. No, I had a ticket. I could have gone today and I was supposed to be out the whole day. What was supposed to happen was I had to go into the hospital in the morning uh, in London just for a little checkup thing and an injection. And um, afterwards, uh, me and my friend were supposed to go to the Science Museum, but he's very ill at the moment. He's picked up yet another chest infection, unfortunately. He's got um, a problem with his uh, immune system. So he's very susceptible uh, to things like that. And he's got a bad chest infection and a very sore throat at the moment. So we couldn't go. But I, I still got back here. I got back here at about, um, I think it was around about two o'clock where I've been out today. I'll tell you about that in a minute anyway. Um, Keith says, BBC Radio London Alpha Sound Jingles. Great. Oh, aren't they fantastic? Have you got, have you got any of them, Keith? Have you actually got any of the BBC, the old 1980s Radio London Alpha Sound jingles? Keith, I think you do. Don't you do a radio show on My Soul in London? Is it MI, My Soul? There's a radio station, an excellent radio. If you like soul music then uh, and you're in London or probably online, My Soul radio station, MI Soul. And I think Keith Jackson, who's there at the moment, he does a regular show on there. Who was on the other night? I think it was, was it a bit of Monday night. Who would have been on at about, about half past seven at night? Because they were talking and I couldn't hear them over the record, over the, over the track. So I don't know who was on the Monday night, Keith. Um... Eloise says, I'm sorry you couldn't see Barry. No charge for the ticket. That's right. Yeah, Eloise. I know. I would love to have gone and see him, but I didn't. Well, I wouldn't have been back in time anyway, even the fact that I didn't go to the Science Museum. Uh, I haven't been to a museum for ages. I didn't know it was all free. I think I, I looked it up. The entrance to the museum is free, but you there are options to go to various different things happening within the museum, I believe. So there we are. Um. Angela says you can never be too early for Barry. Absolutely. You need to see him for as long as possible, my love. As long as possible. Uh, right. Let me see. David Jackson's with us. Hello, David. Nice to see you. How pleased? Uh, Alan says, how pleased are you with the repair on your car? Very pleased indeed, Alan. He's done a wonderful, wonderful job on that car, my nephew. You, but you must have seen it in the little videos last week, didn't you? Angela says your cat likes it outside because it stimulates her off-actory senses. Off-actory senses. I don't know what they are. <laughs> Is this a new word you've made up, Angela? What do you think about your president wearing a cap, dear? They need to be smartly dressed in, in, in suits and shoes and things like that. Not trainers and caps, dear. God sake. What, what important... I mean, King Ching Chong Um... In North Korea, he doesn't wear baseball caps, does he? God's sake, woman. <laughs> or that French one. A is it Eamon? What's that French bloke who's just won something? I mean, he he's about 10 years old, isn't he? Did you say and he's a toy boy, isn't he? Isn't he going out with an old teacher? God, so it's still hope for me then, is there? For me to get a toy boy. I say toy, but something about 30. Anything like younger than 30, and they tend to be a bit, you know. Boring. Oh, oh, shall we play computer games tonight? Oh, my God. I can't, oh, I'm falling asleep now just thinking about it. What do you want me to sit there? Play Pac-Man with you for 10 hours? Oh, no, they play those war games, don't they? They play war games now on the computers. So anything around about the age, uh, between 30 and 45 are doing me. Anything like that, you know. Preferably around about 32. That, that's my preferred age. You know, I mean, if that French bloke can get a, can become a toy boy, maybe I can have one as well. That'd be excellent news. <laughs> My nephew Gary is often horrified when I say, you know, are any of his friends gay and might be interested in Gary's uncle. Can you just imagine? <laughs> My nephew is uh, 30, I think he's... Is he 33 this weekend? My nephew's 33. So obviously all the people at a school with him will always be 33 as well. Can you just imagine turning up with someone the same age as your nephew? <laughs> or maybe even better, one of his friends from school. How hilarious would that be? It's almost worth paying someone, isn't it? Paying someone to pretend that they're actually with you just to see the horrified look on your nephew's face. <laughs> I wonder what that French bloke's mum mum thought, because it, it looks like he's going out with someone who's the same age as his mum. Was it Eamon? Was it Eamon? I can't think of his name now. 
<laughs> dear, dear me. Um, uh, nice to see David Jackson's doing well. Hello, David. Nice to see you. Uh, Angela, ah, sense of smell. Yeah, sense of smell. Um, yeah, I mean, she, I don't think she can see the food when I put it down. She walks around and what I have to do is gently just, I say gently back forcefully, if you see what I mean, gently put her head right down at the bowl and then she starts eating. It's like she doesn't know it's there sometimes. So, um, you know, we do the best for our little animals, though, don't we? Angela says, also, I thought this would be a Trump freezer. Where did it say that? Has a sign come on somewhere that says Trump free? No, we don't really do politics, but we just like to take the mick out of them. You know, <laughs> take the rise out of them a little bit. Alan says, have you been under a sunbed? Alan, if you were with us for the whole show, you will know that I spent some time last week walking around with the sun directly on me and I actually got sunstroke in, in the form of a really banging headache one night. Yes. Do pay full attention to what's going on. I hope I'm not in the background in your house, Alan. I will not be in the background. You turn everything off and you pay full attention to this programme. And stop texting people while you're watching as well. Wait to hear what I've got to say. Thank you. Uh, David says, I always put a smile on your face. I've got very long fingers, David. And if I see you looking upset, give us a call and I'll give you a tickle. All right. Do you like a tickle? Do you like a tickle? Do you remember when you was a child? Did anyone grab your feet and tickle you so you couldn't get away? Isn't that horrible? <laughs> I might try it to myself now. No, it doesn't work on yourself. Look, I'm tickling my feet now and I'm not getting tickled. Good evening to Paul Dow. Hello, Paul. With us today. Um, uh, ah, there we are. Keith Jackson, my soul. He does. There we are. Keith does Saturday breakfast. Also voice of the station. Oh, are you the voice of the station? This is my soul on DAB London or something like that. Do you know what, Keith? Uh, my dream job when I was a child was to become uh, a TV announcer. You know, behind the BBC One globe. Or on Thames Television, you know when they're sitting in, you know when they're sitting in the chair, you know, and it, it was like that. What was his name? P. P. Philip Ellsmore, I think, is it was his name, and he'd come on in between the programs. So you'd have, so you, so you'd have the program that would finish, and then he'd come on. And we hope you enjoyed that program today here on Thames. Coming up a little bit later on, we're going down to the Crossroads Road Motel. Right now it's one o'clock and time for the news, and then look down like that. I wanted to do that. I wanted to be a TV announcer. Of course, they're all gone now. I mean, not, not even a globe on BBC One, dear. First of all, they replaced the globe with these fairified balloons flying all over the place. Ghastly things they were. Ghastly, dear. Balloons flying everywhere they were. And then they replaced the balloons, what with? A little red box that says BBC One. It doesn't even turn. It doesn't turn or sparkle or anything. It just sits there in the corner of the screen. With all these different people, I don't know, disabled people going around in wheelchairs or penguins running about or synchronised swimmers. What's all that about? Get rid of it all, dear. Bring back the globe. That's what we need. We need a globe on the telly. That's what I wanted to do, become a TV announcer. Didn't do it, though. Didn't do it. Uh, Keith says he's also the voice of the station. Jingle Mad site may have the jingles one or two on YouTube, Retro Radio. Uh, I've got a couple, Keith, if you want them. I could uh, send them over to you, which I, I cannot, cannot reveal my sources of acquisition, but I can send you a couple of the BBC Radio London. Dare I play you one? Are they, they're out of copyright now, aren't they? Aren't they out of copyright? I'm sure they are. Shall I play you one? I'll play you one, Keith. You'll love this. You'll love this. Right, hang on a minute. Let me find it. Oh, that's on another section, isn't it? Just a minute. Well, where's that going to be? Uh, okay. Um, will I find... Oh, there it is. There it is. Right, you ready for this, Keith? You ready for this, mate? You are going to love this, dear. Right, here we go. You'll remember this one. Radio how fabulous are they? They've got to be out of copyright. Or how about this one? I've got the, I've actually got the Tony Blackburn one. 
You read it, obviously. I just want to point out, boys and girls, if you're just tuning in, I'm not Tony Blackburn. I honestly am not Tony Blackburn. However, I've got this. You ready for this, Keith? I, you might wet yourself when you hear it. The, the, I'm building up. Maybe I'll save it for later on. Maybe I'll save it for later on and keep you poised, waiting to listen to this, what I've got here. The Tony Blackburn Jingle Deer. Yes. Ready? Here it comes. The place to be with Tony Blackburn. Two o six Radio London. How fabulous are they? You love it, don't you? I've got any more. Hang on. <laughs> I've actually got the whole Radio London tune as well somewhere. Let me see if I can find that. No, nope, that's not there. Uh, I don't want to be playing jingles all day. Um, I, I don't know if you know... Yeah, there's a few more here. Hang on a minute. Radio London theme 2. ID extended. Let me see. Christmas Radio London. No, oh, what's that one now? Um, I thought I had... Oh, here, here's the... Su this is the sun shot. I'll do you one more. I'll do you one more. You ready, Keith? This is the sun... The Radio London Sunshine ID. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> London's news and music 206 the place to be BBC BBC Radio London Isn't that fantastic? We love it, dear. We love it. Hello to Nathan uh, Mayor Jabe. Jeej, Jeb, Jeb, sorry, Jeb. Hello, darling. Welcome along. I think this is the first time you've joined us for a song here. Yes, uh, Keith, I used to work on, uh, I, I used to have, a, it wasn't really a job, it was more of a hobby, uh, on a radio station called CMP Radio. I'm sure you've heard of that one. And um, they had excellent jingles like that as well, but um, I don't, I'm not quite sure where they are on this computer. Let me see. More variety, more of the time. CMP. No, that's a bit boring, that one, isn't it? That's boring, that one. I, I, I was never into, like, talk, it, talk over type jingles. Um... Not sure where that's going to be. I could do a search. I, I, if I leave it as a search, no, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, this PC, is it on there? C drive. Hang on, let's type in. Because the CMP jingles were very, very good. CMP. What happens if I click that? Don't know. Are they going to be in? They might be in old jingles, actually. Do you want me to look for these? Shall I have a quick look for you? It won't take long. Then we can go back onto our little news stories and things. Old, is it old jingles? I don't know, where have I got it? Old, old radio shows, old soul. Jingles old, let's try that. This could be it, this could be it. Oh yeah, this is the one, this is the one. This is the one, one minute. Right, this, this was my opening jingle when I did CMP Radio. Now CMP Radio, uh, was run by a guy called Chris Moses, who does software and all that. It was it was really good and it worked so well. It was one of the first internet radio stations. It was it was after Live Three Sixty Five. I'm sure you've heard of those, Keith. Uh, so CMP and what they did, they sent you a bit of software and it all all had timings on and all that. And at a given time, the 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 the, the, the server would come to you and you'd send your program and it would all go out and it worked wonderfully. Anyway, I had this is my favourite jingle. Uh, from CMP Radio, my opening one. Here we go, here we go. More variety, more of the time. Chris Reardon. I'm CMP. <laughs> I love jingles. Do you like jingles? We love them, Keith. There we are. We'll leave that there. We'll leave that there. There's a, there's a little extra jingle bit for you on the show tonight at no extra cost. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anorak for Fielder. You was on Reach. Okay, so CMP and Reach are connected, but not the same. And I think I was on Reach for a while and I did do a regular morning show on Reach, but it only lasted about a month. And the reason was I couldn't commit the time. I find myself, you know, pushed around for time or, or, or 
I, I just and, and it got to such a point I said look I can't do this can't do this anymore and they like said well do you want to do one here and now so I'll leave it for now because I like to do regular I did, I did like to do regular although the same thing happens with this show Keith you know I used to do this at regular times uh, on a Saturday at 11 o'clock but um, I, I found it a bit hard going because it's 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 like a job, but it isn't a job, isn't it? You know, doing this now, this is more, this is all fun to me. It's not, you know, it's not really a job. It's like, but when you do it at a regular time, it becomes a job. And then you might want to do something else on that Saturday. Oh, no, I've got to be here at that time. So I changed it. And actually, I think that's how a lot of stuff is going now. Certainly with television, isn't it? Like Netflix and all that business. You don't have to be in front of your Netflix subscription at seven o'clock on Wednesday night to see the latest episode of whatever was on there. I don't, I don't have Netflix or I've got anything like that. No, I've got no subscription television whatsoever. Um, that I don't find the need for it. I think there's loads on the telly. Watching Holby today. Very exciting today, Holby. Did you see that? Bloke, uh, bloke's got two hearts. They put another heart in him. Can't remember what was wrong with him, but he's got two arts in there and he reckons they'll get another 10 years because he's got two arts in there. That's all right, isn't it? Like Doctor Who. <laughs> yes. So this show as well. So I stopped scheduling this, sch scheduling this show as well. And I just now do them as and when. Usually one a day. <clears throat> Sometimes I miss out a day. But generally I do... Do one show a day, tonight at night. And the other thing, Keith, is with not scheduling the show, <clears throat> you get different people. So in the morning, there is those people that watch or listen. In the afternoon, there's another lot of people. And in the evening, there's another lot of people, all different times, depending. Some people are working at different times as well. So that works quite well as well. well it works for me anyway. I'm happy sort of doing it that way. <clears throat> Uh, oh, Keith went to Gravity. Now, what did I... Did I go to Gravity? No, there was another... Wasn't there another station? There was Gravity. There was another one. Was it Smooth or... Oh, gosh, I can't remember. Because he had several stations, didn't he? Was that Dean? Dean who had those stations. I think it was Dean. Nice bloke. Uh, but for some reason, I kept having a problem with the... With, with the software on that one, and it would it would just keep cutting me off all the time. I think Swish, that was it, Swish. So if you was on Gravity, that was like more for the younger people, wasn't it? I was on I was on Swish for the older people, for the mid middle middle aged people. I'll be middle aged one day, Keith, probably. You know, still here I am in my fountain of youth, and we carry on while we're still young, don't we? Yes. David likes the mug. Thank you very much, David. Thought Park. My mate Ronnie bought me this when he went to Thought Park. Have you been there, Thought Park? I went about ten years ago uh, with my niece, niece and nephews, and um, I was very disappointed. Actually, I thought it looked really tired. I don't know if they've done the place. It was nothing like Disney. Once you've been, and I don't mean Euro Disney. Once you've been to Disney Florida. That's it. No, 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 no theme parks are as good after that, I think. Dan Page, that's the one. Dan Page, I remember now. Hello to Shania who's with us tonight. Hello, lovely Shania. Hope you're doing well, my darling. Uh, Joey says, can you see my messages? Joey, what, what, what about? Yes, of course I can. We can't just come straight to your messages. What about other people? Now, you're being selfish. You're being selfish. You have to wait, dear. It's not McDonald's. You know, I'll have a burger place. Bang, bang, bang. It's not McDonald's, dear. We take it nice and leisurely here, Jerry. You take your life leisurely as well, don't you, my love? So there we are. Now, Jerry says, I need a jingle for your show, Chris, for this programme. You. It's... What do you mean? You need... Uh, well, I need a jingle for this. I don't, we don't need any jingles, dear. We got the music. We got the music. You've heard the music, dear. You've heard my music on the show, haven't you, dear? Yes. Uh, David Jackson says it's all about fire stick. Yeah, I've seen that thing. Now, what's that thing that you will use on fire stick? Oh, um, is it Joby or something like that? Kobe? Sobe? There's this thing that you can put on Firestick to watch films and all that, isn't there? Kobe, 
Sobe. Can't remember what it's called now. But I think, is that what you mean by the fast stick, David? They can watch all films and things like that on there, can't they? Yes. Um, Cody, thank you. Yes, Cody. I think a lot of people have got this Cody. I don't think it's legal. I'm sure it's illegal. Don't say on the air if you've got Cody, for Christ's sake. The police will be straight. Excuse me, sir. Are you watching Cody? But you'll be OK tonight. No, we're watching Chris Reardon. Ah, oh, that's OK. So, yeah. And they probably know me straight away. You know, that that does happen quite a lot. You know, I'm out in the street. Uh, so there we are. Oh, Keith was on Swish as well. Yeah. Yeah, I was on Swish. Swish radio. And then I think they stopped the presenters on there and they just became music only. So that was a bit boring to me, you know. I don't understand um, at radio stations that just play music. I mean, what is the point? What is the point? Good evening to Johnny Key, who joins us tonight. Hello, Johnny, who sent me some lovely news stories, which I've left in the car, unfortunately, Johnny. They're still waiting in the car at the moment. Talking of news stories, look at this one. In uh, the mail, in the Daily Mail uh, today, uh, gang of five men travelled from Liverpool to South Wales Biscuit Factory. Oh, yes, a gang of criminals stole £20,000 worth of jammy dodgers. Mmm. Oh, do you know what? I fancy some biscuits. I've got no biscuits in the cupboard. I bought these biscuits. Have I got the box here? Did I show you them the other day? They were... No, not those ones. No, I bought these the other day. Look. I had the whole packet while I was sitting up here in front of a computer. That's disgusting, isn't it? But there's another one. Uh, you know McVitie's Digestives? <clears throat> I think they were called Deli Biscuits. Deli Biscuits? And they're, they're, they're like rectangular, bit of chocolate on the top, biscuit underneath. Not nice. No, I mean, obviously, I finished them. Because we can't be wasting food, dear. I finished them. Not recommended. I've got the I threw the box away now. I remember now, so I haven't got those at the moment. Not very nice at all. But I haven't got any biscuits. I wish I had some jammy dodgers. The story goes on. The five men, all from Liverpool. I love the Liverpool accent. I can only dream of being asked out by a scaffolder, round about thirty-two years old, from Liverpool. Aye aye. Is that how they talk? No, that's no, that's Newcastle, isn't it? Aye aye. Is it? I love the accent. The five men, all from Liverpool, travelled... I mean, if, if one rang me up now on this mobile phone, I would happily switch off the, and go and meet him immediately. That's how I am. I'm sorry, lovey. I'm sorry I would be like that. And not only that, I would take him a little bag of jammy dodgers because they obviously like them up there. They obviously like jammy dodgers in Liverpool. The five men, all from Liverpool, travelled hundreds of miles to carry out the carefully planned raid on the Burton's Biscuit Factory in Cumbran, South Wales. Have I said that right, Welsh people? Meh! Have I said that right? Where C C Cumbran, South Wales. That beautiful countryside in Wales. I don't understand why more people don't go on holiday to these places. You're wasting your time queuing up at airports. Who's going on a plane somewhere this year, anyone? Oh, I bet you're looking forward to that. Queuing up in that airport for hours on end. And then the security bloke. Have you got anything in your case? Yeah, clothes, you thicko. <laughs> Have you got your passport? Oh, 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 can't bear it. Oh, what a lot of mucking about. Oh, the plane's been delayed by three hours. Oh, here we go again. I don't, I don't do it anymore. No more flying. No more flying. I get in my car, I drive for a couple of hours, and I'm there at a caravan somewhere in the country. Marvellous, dear. Highly recommended. And wows, there's so many lovely places in Wales to go and visit. There really is. Uh, these people were caught after police used closed-circuit television and automatic number plate recognition cameras to track their movements. But none of the stolen biscuits were ever recovered. Fat bastards. They ate the lot of them. Paul Price, 35. Kieran Price, 28. Aaron Walsh, 25. Stephen Burrows, 36. And Anthony Edgerton, 35, were sentenced. Is there a picture of them? Hang on a minute. There's one there. One, two. Oh. Oh, ugly bastards. Oh, they're not nice looking, dear. How disappointing. You would have thought one of them was nice, wouldn't you? Because some of these burglars and murderers are very nice looking. I'm sorry, they are, lovey. I say how I think. They are. Don't you find that? You know, when you look at sometimes the stories in the paper, you know, oh, murderer, you know, axe murderer, you know, 
buries an axe in some, and then you see the picture, and oh, that's nice, you know, maybe I can go to prison and share a cell with him. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, uh, the ringleader, Anthony Edgerton, actually, he's probably the better looking one out of all of them. How old is he? Anthony Edgerton. Oh, he's the 35-year-old. Yeah, quite good looking. Um, made a joke as he was jailed, saying to the judge, sweet, thanks, Your Honour. That's lovely. Another defendant quipped, anyone fancy a biscuit? <laughs> Why would you nick all those biscuits? I don't get it. <clears throat> there was a significant amount of planning with a series of thefts involved in the cloning of number plates, so it would not know what for biscuits. They were guilty to a similar raid when a trailer full of nearly 2,000 cases of Carling, Black Le uh, Carling Lager was taken, worth more than £43,000. I mean, how much call is there? How much call is there for biscuits on the black market? It's not like you can't go into Waitrose or Sainsbury's and buy them, is it? Is is that the thing that people are stealing now? Biscuits? Can they? Know? I, I, is the security so good in banks now that they can't get the money, so they've moved on to biscuits? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Wayne says, "Can you play a Thames ID and then do an announcement, please?" Oh, we're, we're not doing jingles all night long. Just a minute. All right, let me find one. Do you want a Thames ID? One minute. <clears throat> Here we go, here we go. Hang on, we want the short one. Um, okay. And a very good morning to you from us here at Thames Television. Our programmes for older viewers start at 12 o'clock with the Sullivans. Right now, it's 9.30 and time for our programmes for schools and colleges. How's that? See, I could have done that job. I could have done that job. Absolutely. There's a bloke in Northern Ireland. He's very, very gay on Ulster television. I think they've just stopped with the InVision announcers on Ulster. And they, they were the last ones because they got rid of all ads years ago. And it was just a shame, wasn't it? It was so nice and homely. But I think, you see, I could have done that job, Wayne. Do you think it's too old now? 55 next year I am. I've got a pinch. Don't laugh, Wayney. I've got a pensions meeting tomorrow at 10.30. Is it? What time is it tomorrow? Oh, no, that was supposed to be the vet's appointment, wasn't it? One minute. One thirty tomorrow. I've got I've got a meeting with some pensions bloke in, Le in Yately. <clears throat> All part of the government. It's not a private thing. Government, because I'll get my private pension next year. <laughs> my mate told me that the best thing to do is take a lump sum because that's all tax free. And do I know what I'm going to do with that? Actually, I know exactly what I'm, I'll, I'll take the if I can do that tax free next year, then I will take the lump sum and pay down some of my mortgages because you know I'm a landlord. I always like to pay a little bit off. If I get extra bit of money, I pay it off. We've got to knock these debts out. I can't stand debt, dear. Can't stand debt. There we are. See, Wayney, I could have done that, couldn't I? I could have done that, yes. Um, Dino's with us tonight. Hello, Dino. Evening, Dino. Uh, David Jackson says, yeah, Delhi there, why UK? Yeah, Delhi, bis Delhi chocolate biscuits or something they are from uh, from McVitie's. Not nice, not nice, the chocolate ones. OK, all right. Um, we've got some more stories here. Where are we now? Now, I don't know what you think of this one, boys and girls. Now, don't forget the phone lines are open if you want to call in at some point today. That's OK as well. Uh, 020-8144-3477 is my phone number. Lines are open. You don't have to call in. You can just sit there and listen if you want. 020-8144-3477. I've got a Skype as well. If you want to Skype in, our Skype username is United Kingdom Talk. All one word, United Kingdom Talk is the Skype username, OK? Now, what do you think of this? And I'll tell you what I think first. And that is on the BBC News site tonight. A teenage boy with significant mental health problems has been held in solitary confinement for four and a half months, a court has heard. The boy, who's only 16, uh, referred to as AB, was detained alone in his cell at Feltham Young Offences Institution in London for 23 and a half hours a day. That's a long time to be stuck in a little box, isn't it? 23 hours and a half, 23 and a half hours a day 
in a little room. Lawyers for his mother claim inhuman and degrading conditions breach the Human Rights Act. <coughs> um, it says, since February, the boy has been permitted out of his cell for slightly longer periods, mainly to attend classes, but still spends 22 hours a day alone in his cell. All he has to do is watch television or lie on his bed. The court heard the boy had experienced emotional and physical abuse and serious trauma when he was younger. According to papers submitted by his legal team, he'd been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, hypervigilance, hyperarousal, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I mean, it's a lot of words, isn't it? Um, so I don't know what you think about that. You see, because on one side of the coin, I think, you know, if you do something wrong, then putting someone in a prison where it's all comfortable and... Like, what are they called? Open prisons and all. I See, I don't go along with that. Shouldn't people go into prison where it's as unpleasant as possible so that you wouldn't want to go back in there again? On the other hand, it does say he's got mental health problems. Now, we don't know that. We, we haven't met this boy. I haven't met this boy. I, I can't make up my own mind about that because I've never met him. But I, I, I do think a lot of the time these lawyers throw in this crap just to get someone off. Do you not think so? So I do think sometimes um, this softly, softly approach, I think it is, is wrong. And people need to go to prison and it must be as unpleasant as possible so they don't want to go back in there again. So maybe they won't nick another pound of butter from the supermarket. Or something like that. If you think it's worth taking a risk, oh, you know, if I get caught for that, oh, it's only a couple of weeks in prison. I'll be able to watch the telly for a couple of weeks. It's all right. You know, I don't think that's that's a, a that's a deterrent at all. Do you? Or what do you think about that? Put a little message there or you can call in about it. 20 uh, is my phone number. Now, talking about robberies and things like that, uh, my mate caught a robber the other day. Oh, yes. As well as having a normal sized, a large Waitrose here in Bracknell, we've got a little Waitrose, which is kind of uh, attached to the Shell petrol station, uh, which is not, actually not too far away from it. Actually, I could pop over there after, later and get some biscuits. I fancy some biscuits tonight, but I haven't got any in the fridge, in the, uh, in the cupboard. And um, <clears throat> my mate was in there, and while he was in there, he spotted uh, a, a, a young... Young man, not boy, young man, uh, coming out of of weight of little waitrose and starting to run with a basket full of goods. Well, my mate got him. My mate jumped on him and he had him, right? And then they obviously must have seen it on the cameras in the shop. And this shop assistant woman, she's shop assistant, come run. Not that, that, that matter, it doesn't matter. Could have been a bloke, doesn't matter. Uh, this shop assistant who happened to be a woman come running out and, um, and, and said, oh, just let him go. And my mate said, what do you mean, let him go? Well, you might get hurt. Let him go. So we let him go. So what's the point of that then? At which point... He went into the shop then. He said, well, are you going to ring the police? Well, we'll do it in a minute. <sighs> What's the point of that, eh? So he's got away with that. So he'll probably go in somewhere else and do the same thing. Is that what happens now? You just let them go? What is the point of that? He couldn't believe it when the, when the woman said to him, oh, we'll ring them a little bit later. Shouldn't you rung them there and then? And reported them. What about the closed circuit television and all that business? Presumably you had the face on it. Has anyone rung the police? And that was the end of it. They didn't ask for my mate's name or his address or his phone number or anything. In fact, I think he rung them up and offered it. No, it's OK. They weren't interested. What is the point of that place? Not like that at the big retros. We've got a lovely bloke in there. He's got dreadlocks. Very good looking. I always have a bit of a chat with him. He tells me, tells me about his family and all that. I've seen him run after someone. They don't escape him, my darling. They do not escape it. I believe they are taken up to the office and locked in and waiting for the police who correct them. 
I've got lots of time for have a go heroes. Was it Tom Tom Harding? Tom Harding in Richmond the other day, wasn't it? He ran after some little thief and caught them and made a citizen's arrest. Oh yes. Excellent. Excellent work, Tom. Excellent work. Was Tom Harding in that programme Taboo? That was excellent, that was, wasn't it? Remember that programme Taboo that was on the telly a little while ago? But they let they let him go. Tom Harding didn't let him go. He got him. Arrested him. Good. Good. David Jackson says, if you can't do the time, then don't do the crime. Absolutely. You're so right, David. You're so right. Alf is liking the new background. Thank you. My jacket is suit in the background today, is it? Just about. <laughs> Thank you, Alfie. I meant to get back to you, Alfie, about that little... Um, uh, you were going to do some uh, tarot reading or something, weren't you? On the show at some point. Uh, by uh, by Skype or something, which is an excellent idea. Uh, Wayne, says, I used to love the London Weekend television announcer's voice, plus their IDs were more colourful. Are you saying you want the London Weekend one there, Wayne? Is that what you're saying? Just a moment, please. <laughs> I've got them all here, dear. They're all here. Here it is. One minute. Do you want another announcement, Wayne? Do you want another announcement? Here we go. Here we go. One minute. One minute now. This is London Weekend Television coming to you from our studios on the South Bank. It's 10 o'clock now and time for the South Bank Show. See, I could have done that. I would have been good at that. Oh, there must be something I can do in the world. Something. I'm just useless at everything. Gustav said it's the same material. You could see the static crackling between the jacket and the wall. <laughs> Shut up, Gustav. By the way, are they all your, your, your own teeth? <laughs> Gustav is very fashionable and he wears some very, very strange clothes, I have to say, when he comes into Central Station at the karaoke nights. <laughs> Ray Reynolds is going to bed. It's all getting a bit... Oh, don't go, Ray. Don't go yet, Ray. I found a story about you. BBC website. <laughs> World's oldest fungus raises evolution questions. Oh, yes. Is this about you, Ray? Fungus-like forms have been found in rocks dating back 2.4 billion years. How do they know that? How do they know it was 2.4 billion years? Who told them that? You don't know that? They're just making that up. I'm sure that is half the time they're making it up. And how do you know the world's round? All we've got is a few pictures. Don't know that. Might be flat. Huh? The fossils drilled from rocks that were once beneath the seafloor resembled living fungi. Scientists say the discovery could push back the date for the oldest fungi by one to two billion years. The find suggests that fungi arose not on land, but in the deep sea. It's not a fungus. The organism could be the extinct branch of life that has been described before. Is that you, Ray? Are you one of the world's oldest fungi? I want to know that now. Please tell us. <laughs> Thank you, Ray, for calling in at a, a, a very, very late night moment there. Yes. Well, right. right. Uh, we've got another story here. Just a moment, please. Um, I'm very much liking the look of a flying car, boys and girls. Yes, a flying car. Now, a car. now I saw this in uh, yesterday's paper. And this this car, it looks like, it, it's almost like a drone. I think looking at the picture of it, it's like got fans. One, two, three, four. All electric. All electric. Uh, Google co-founder Larry Page's mysterious flying car will be available to buy by the end of this year. Wow. I mean, according to those old cartoon programmes from the 60s, we're probably about 30 years late with this. But never mind, we get there. Don't rush them, dear. Don't rush them. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Kitty Hawk... President Sebastian Thrun, who co-created Google's self-driving car, tweeted a link to the company's official website today. Uh, and it's looking fantastic. It really is. The vehicle rounds about, weighs about 100 kilograms, 220 pounds, and can hit speeds of 25 mile an hour. Now, that may not sound fast, 25 mile an hour, but if you can fly over traffic, you see... 
would only take me an hour to get to work instead of sometimes two hours that it takes. She described the Kitty Hawk car as a toy helicopter. The prototype looks and feels a lot like a flying motorcycle. You mount the seat and lean forward, just like you would on a bike. The controls are built into a set of handlebars and work similar to buttons and joysticks on a video game controller. Uh, it takes off and lands vertically like a, like a helicopter, but unlike a helicopter, the flyer is 100% electric and powered by eight rotors. So that's, you know, little, like, you know, like a drone, just like, just like a drone, isn't it? It's like a drone. So you're over there, a drone, you know, it's got those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, like that. So you've got all those fans. Go I wonder what happens if one fan breaks down. Do you just go to one side? I would imagine that there's there's safety aspects built in there, actually. It's a bit like a plane. You know, if you've got four engines and one goes down, it can still... I think a plane can fly on one engine. Is that right or not? Anyone know the answer to that? Um, it takes off. Uh, the controls are built into a set of handlebars and work similar to buttons and joysticks on a video game controller. It takes off and lands vertically. Ah, look at that. But unlike a helicopter, the flyer is 100% electric and powered by the eight rotors. And it's fantastic. The company is offering a £1,560 discount on those willing to pay an early £78, just £78 deposit for a vehicle now, though it's not been said how much it will cost. I wonder what that's going to cost then. That's a very low deposit, 78 quid, isn't it? Would we be able to fly it, though? You know, well, what are you going to do if um, if it comes down on a load of cars? Would it be your fault? Or the fault of the manufacturer? Would you buy one of those? I mean, I've, I've flown model aeroplanes before, but um, I, I'm not very good at that, really. They tend to crash. Wouldn't want to crash that. Wayne is leaving us now. He's got to be up at five o'clock to, to drive a local bus. Yes, indeed. A local bus. Yes. Good night, Wayne. Night, night, dear. I'll have to go as well in a minute. We've been chatting away far too long tonight. Uh, Johnny Key says, I think Ray is a funny guy. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Ray says there's not mushroom in the Thames continu continuity cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right there, Ray. Oh, we got a call coming in just a moment now. There we are. Hello, who's calling in, please? Hello, good evening, it's Dino. Hello, Dino, all right? Yeah, not bad, about you? Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while since we heard from you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from sunny Surrey. Oh, you've, of course you've moved, haven't you? Mm. I didn't mm. recognise that code then, dear. I thought, that's not London. I thought no, you might be calling sorry. from... Far away. And whereabouts, yes. in, whereabouts in Surrey are you? Um, I'm near Caterham. Caterham? Yeah. I'm just trying to think where that is now. It's uh, past Pearly going out towards Brighton. Oh, OK. You're quite far away from me then, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quite yeah. away. Well, hello, Dino. What can How I do for you tonight, my friend? Well, <clears throat> I have a question for you. and. Um, Apart from, I know one of the answers, but I'm hoping that you'll find some more. I Do you ever watch Casualty or Holby City? I both watch them every single week religiously. Right. <laughs> so have you noticed over about the past month to six weeks how characters from Holby are drifting into Casualty and vice versa? Yes, I have. Yes. And that's what... What, what other programmes can you think of where that happens? I think it probably happened in Dallas and Dynasty or some of those, wasn't it? Or the Carrington... No. No, not Dallas and Dynasty, because they were two different TV stations. Well, was, it, um, was it, was it, was it, um, not Dallas and Dynasty, was it the Carringtons, or one of them, one of those, I think, drifted, some, some, oh, some of those yes. in that sort uh, of American. No, you're English thinking, show, you're thinking Dallas and... And? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, da, 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 da. It was a spin-off from Dallas. Yeah, wasn't it with the kids? D and the music went da 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 da. Not landing. What was that? Not landing. That's it. I yeah. think Not landing was a spin-off from Dallas. 
Yeah, because I'm getting really confused with, with the characters that are crossing over. I think, ah, so it's very evident that on Holby and Casualty, Holby is upstairs from Casualty, which is downstairs. Yes. Well, that's how I got hooked into Holby. Because I never used to watch Holby, and it was it was last year, actually. Um, I watched the end of Dallas. There was a story going on with Connie Beecham. And as the credits rolled, because I always watch the end of the show, the music and everything. Do you, or do you switch it off? Oh, I watch. Yeah, right till the end, until the logo comes up and the next programme starts, then I turn it off. I have to watch the whole thing. I'm like oh, that yeah. in the cinema. I'm always the last one at the cinema. Yeah. My mate, he's always, as soon as the film finishes, he wants to be up and out. No, I paid my money. I want to watch the credits come up and listen to what tune they're playing, dear. Yeah, me too. I, um, I get my yeah. money's worth. Yeah, so and as the credits were rolling, it says, and you can see Connie Beecham making a guest appearance in this week's episode of Holby. I thought, oh, well, I watched that this week and I watched it and that was it. I was in. I was in yeah. and I've been watching it ever since. I, I, I love Holby. For yes. people in America, it's a bit like, what is it like? What would you call it? ER? It is like ER. And the yeah. latest crossover character, wasn't it the black nurse, the big girl? What's her name? Yeah. She's lovely, the cancer one. Uh, big mm. girl, she's just had a baby. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, it's absolutely fantastic. Love her and character. The, the, Love the cast her. are amazing. I, I prefer it, actually, to Casualty. Yeah, I do. There's some people I don't like in Casualty. I can't stand the girl who's just had the baby. No, not me. Um, Ginger Air, big. Yep. Can't stand her. Uh, and I can't stand Jacob. Don't like him. And don't like David either. No. Nope. Uh, David gets on my nerve. He gets really on my nerves, David. And also the mixed race girl who she can't act. She can't you mean act. The doctor, doctor. Um, and I'm confusing the shows now. I'm thinking of Dr. Dixby. Yeah, she that, she Holby. recently caught the um, the mixed race ambulance man with her son. Yes. Yes. Her. Yes, yes. What's her now, name? I I don't know, but she has been in many, many programmes and what? I cannot for the life of me think what. Oh, right, OK. Well, maybe it's that just that programme that doesn't suit her, but I don't, don't like that. So there's actually four characters in that now that I don't like. Because um, in Holby, last week, I'm on catch-up, so I only watched it last night. Oh, you haven't seen tonight's one? The used to be in Emmerdale was on right. last week. Well, I watched it last night. So she was in it. So every week there's someone that pops up that's quite famous. It's quite bizarre. But they used to do that with the Bill characters as well. If you look, some, a lot of the Bill characters used right. to do that as well. They popped up in various locations doing different different things. It was quite bizarre. Uh, are, are they running out of actor, actors or actresses, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> it, it's very bizarre. But apart from, like, like, like I said, Holby and Casualty, I can't think of many characters that pop up in shows that are pretty much the same. Can well, you think of any other? I mean... Yeah, there's, 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 there was a well, complete different stories, actually, but there's a girl at the moment in that excellent programme, Line of Duty. Have oh, you right, I've never watched that. Oh, my God, it's fantastic. The, ne the last one is this week. I don't know if you can watch all the others before, before the last one comes on Sunday, but there's a girl in there. Uh, basically, the story is murders have been committed... Yeah. And um, the police force wanted to prosecute someone because they didn't have anyone. So they did. Uh, but the the, the, the late there's a, a lady who's doing the prosecutions who's involved in the murder. And there's oh, another yeah. selection of the police who are investigating that selection of the police because they think there's something going going on. It's very, very exciting. Line of Duty. Anyway, there's a girl in Line of Duty who was in a program, <coughs> funnily enough, a, 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 a like like mini series that was on the week before that, and she's crossed over from one to the other, but completely different character. Isn't it bizarre? I mean, it's the same as EastEnders. Have you noticed all the old characters creeping back into EastEnders? I don't. I don't watch any. Well, unless you. I don't think you can include. I don't think they count Casualty or Holby City as soaps. And if they don't, then I don't watch any soaps. EastEnders... Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've only been, been watching it because of the, there's been a couple of good storylines. But I, I think with Carnation Street and, and like Emmerdale, EastEnders, 
you could not watch it for years and go straight back in and pick up literally where you left off years later. Right. It's the most it's the most bizarre thing. But EastEnders at the moment, as all the old characters come back in, and I noticed Lee Ryan from Blue popped up for the first time in uh, EastEnders this week. Very but, nice indeed. Oh yes, I saw that. Didn't he have his top off? Yes. Oh yes, very tasty, dear. Very me, <laughs> very me. <laughs> Yeah, so that was quite bizarre. He's popped up as the bar manager. Okay. So it, it, it's it's really funny. With it's like the least expected people turn up, and you think, what? Well, the last the last EastEnders I wrote, I watched, was Christmas when Den and Angie got divorced. No, that's the last one. Yeah. Then you and I, I came out of Neighbours when Helen Daniels wasn't in it anymore. Wow. Never got into Coronation. Never watched Coronation Street, um, Crossroads, Emmerdale. No, didn't watch it. Don't watch any of them really. No. Do you I watch? Like... Uh, are you watching the new series of Prisoner or the new Twenty Four? No, no, none of those. No. Oh. None of those. So I'd rather come up and talk to you, to be honest, Dino. <laughs> what do you watch when you do watch? Just apart um, from those. Yes, uh, and... well, uh, I watched Line of Duty, as I say, Holby City Casualty, uh, Doctor Who, I think is excellent at the moment. Um, Never watched it. Neighbours from Hell. Mm. Can't pay your take it away. I quite like that. Uh, what else have I got downstairs? Do you know what? You sound like my mother. Oh, do I? <laughs> All the programmes that my mum watches, you watch. <laughs> But the soaps don't interest me at all, really, no. I have the news on a lot. I do have the news on. I like documentaries. Um, what was I watching the other day? Uh, and now when I get Inside Out or Panorama, some of those programmes I like. Uh, I don't really like any of the quiz shows. I find them annoying now. <clears throat> I was watching, talking of um, news, I was watching that new prototype car that they've got, the driverless car, which they're going to be testing. Oh, right, um, yes. Um and it looks like a smart car, uh, right. driverless, that Google are doing. Yeah. Um, it was on um, BBC News. It was either yesterday or today. Well, one day goes into another with me because I'm a full-time care of my mum and dad. So. Um, That's why you moved, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And um, they, were, they were driving it along the street. Um, I think it was yesterday. And, my God, people were just looking double-take. Well, they would, wouldn't they? Yeah. People sitting in, the, in, in there with their arms folded. Where was uh, this? On, and no steering wheel. People were double taking them. It was going along literally uh, the, the pavement in the middle of a shopping centre. It was like, huh? <laughs> but uh, like what you were saying about that helicopter yeah. thing where the helicopter car was going to take off. It's all coming. Oh, of course it is, yeah. Where, where, where did you say the car was you saw? I, I can't remember where they where it was. It was in the middle of a shopping centre somewhere. Is it Milton Keynes? Where? Might be Milton Keynes. It could have been. Because I think they're, te they're going to test out um, little sort of mini mini cab, electric mini cab, automatic things. So you literally get in there. I don't know whether they're on the same route going around all the time. You you just get in one, the door closes, and it takes you off somewhere. All automatic. Yeah, it's all coming. And I tell you what, those 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 um, uh, flying cars I just told you about there, they'll mm. be automatic. At the moment, you're having to steer them, but you'll just type in some coordinates or something, and it, you push a button, and, and it'll just take you there. Isn't it now exciting? I, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, talking of cars, um, I am taking driving lessons because you know what my job used to be. I won't go into it on air, but I used to get um, free transport all over the place, and so I never had to um, ever drive a car. Anyway, since my mum and dad have been ill, I've decided to start taking lessons and drive a car. Now, I've been having this argument with my brother for the past 24 hours, and I haven't quite got to the answer yet. Maybe you know. If I'm a learner driver, I buy my own car, and I decide to get full comp insurance, and I get a driver by my side of me who has a full driving license as... Um, someone who's like, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, not a driving instructor, but someone that's got a full licence, then as a professional driver, you can drive in then to take, you you know, you can go out on the road with them. Yeah. Does the passenger have to have insurance as well, or is it just you as a learner have full comp insurance? 
do they have to have insurance as well? The passenger who would be... I don't, I don't know. Be... The answer to that is I don't know. I've been having this argument with my brother and I haven't found out the answer yet. And I'm saying, if I've got full comp insurance and I have a crash, my passenger who would be my so-called instructor, say, say it was my mum who's got a full driving licence, yes. I could go out if she, I could go out with her if, I, if I've got full comp insurance because she's got a full licence. She wouldn't need insurance, I don't think. And my brother's saying, she does, she does. I said, but yeah, if I have a crash, we both can't claim, claim for the car. He said, no, but if I, if the car conks out or something happens to me, she would have to drive the car home. I said, well, that's a completely different matter. Yes. He said, and he said, no, 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 she needs insurance. And I said, no, absolutely not. So I haven't fathomed that one out, whether uh, both of us would need insurance if I, if I take, if I go out and have full comp insurance on the road and my mum is the passenger. Have you been onto the... I think you're going to have, you'll have to ring up the insurance companies. I don't know. I don't I know. know that one. Would, would you know what? Do you know how much I, I looked full comp? Oh, yeah, go and frighten me. Full, full comp as, as, a, as a learner driver, the cheapest I found was £1,250. Yeah, it sounds about right. You'll be, I couldn't believe think it. Yourself, think yourself lucky you're not, not, you're not 18 years old. Because you'd probably be looking at two and a half, three thousand pounds. I could not believe it. My, oh, yeah. I was just, I was absolutely <laughs> dumbstruck. Most of them were nearly two thousand. Most of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't believe how much insurance companies must be, must be absolutely raking in. Is that with a black box in the car as well? I have absolutely no idea. I just looked on, on online um, right. tonight. Well, you want what you want prices. is a black. To, to bring it down a bit, you need a, a, a that might be with the black box, but there's a black box they put in the car and it, it monitors all your driving. So if you're driving carefully, then over uh, time, that insurance will come down. Really? Mm. Never heard My nephew that. had one. Mm. Wow. But, but my I, nephew's I can't insurance was. They're raking in. I can't believe how much they're raking in, seriously. My nephew's insurance was about two and a half thousand pounds. How did he afford that? Well, you have to pay. It, you have to pay it monthly. It's the only way you can do it. It's got to be cheaper getting public transport, surely. Well, yeah, but you want to learn to drive. I mean, it'll come down eventually. But my um, fully comp insurance, I've got a, got a brand new car, is about is about five hundred pounds at the moment. Well, my mum is with AA Insurance, <clears throat> and because um, my dad used to work for the AA, she got a discount. But my mum's got full comp insurance, two hundred and seventy-five pound. Yeah, is it, what car has she got? Um, a Nissan Note. Yeah, cheap car. Uh, sorry, not not cheap. Sorry, not cheap car. Cheap, I know what you mean. Too, it's the cheap, um, too I think it's one point four or something I like that. I think the cheap, the cheapest car. What 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 insurance did you apply for? What car have you got then? I'm taking the Nissan Note. Oh, you're having the Note what, from yeah. your mum. Yeah. So that's not new, is it? No. God. No. And that dear. Really, really expensive. But I thought you might know the answer to that question. Afraid not, my friend. No, you know I quite a know. few things. I so what I'm imagine... going to have to do tomorrow is, is um, I'll either ring the DVLA or someone up and um, and ask them because well, I want to think... go out. I want to go out in the car because driving lessons now. You know, they're twenty five pound a lesson. That's the cheapest I can find. It's a lot, isn't it? It's really expensive. To to, to, drive, learn to drive. To drive is expensive. Um, you want to think yourself lucky, really, that you're not in London, mate. Well, I don't know how much it is in London now. Well, it's it's not that. Your insurance would be much higher in London. Not only that, then you have to buy, um, like, a parking space and all this business. Oh, yes. It's so expensive to have a car in London. And that's why a lot of people haven't got one. Wow. Absolutely what? amazing, isn't it? The, yeah, the yeah. Prices. I, I can't keep up with it. Shocking. Oh, well, you'll get Alrighty. to it. Thanks nice for calling in. To you. Very nice to hear you after such a long time, dear. I know. I've been in and out. I am listening and I am watching. I don't ex People are generally not there for every single show and every word I say. People dip in and out here and there. I know that. That's all right. Well, let you, you take off, care. dear. <laughs> Look after your mum and dad. You're doing a wonderful thing there, Dino. Thanks, Chris. All Talk right. Good soon. luck to you. Bye-bye, Dino. Bye. There we are. Dino calling. A lovely place in Surrey. Let me just, uh, let me just uh, put that in there. Sorry, is Sorry's got an E in it, has it? Sorry got an E in it? One moment. Sorry's got an E in it. Yeah, there we go. Right. 
All right, gang. Well, uh, do today's birthdays. And then I think we're finished up now. Uh, lines are now closed. Your oh, hang on a minute. Hyde is calling in. Oh, shall I take Heidi's call? Go on then, I'll take Heidi's call. Hello, Heidi, calling from... Hello, love. From Fulham. How are you, Heidi? You're right. Let's just do a couple of messages coming through before I chat to you, Heidi. Uh, David on, Jackson says, line of duty is ace. Oh, it's fantastic. Line of duty... Oh, hang on, my, my microphone's come off its wires. Hang on. It's got, like, little, little bits of... Um, what do you call it? Um... Elastic. <laughs> the little bits of elastic, Heidi, they stop it from banging if I hit something. There we are. Let's back together now. It's all... The whole thing... Oh, hang on. I've got one more bit here. It's all, it's all held together with sellotape, this studio, you know, Heidi. <laughs> you think I'm joking, dear? It is. It's all bits and pieces. Hang on a minute. Uh, shall I show you this? Look, it's like a cat's cradle. Can you see it? And yeah. it's on like... It's on... You can't see it, obviously. And it's on like bits of... Um, Elast, uh, you know that wire elastic. What's that called? Like it's like a like a like a thin elastic band, and it, if it goes like that, then it's, it's then a bit it's loose. Then it's, love. There we are. Can you see that? Hang on a minute. Let me yeah. just move a bit. There we are. Hey. It's a bit loose. Yeah, it's better now. Now it has to be shaking a bit because that stops. If I bang something, you don't hear it. Otherwise, if it's if it's touching, then it then it bangs. Yeah, but, it, yeah, but it's a bit too loose. It, I mean, I, I know that has to be loose. <laughs> oh dear! Now we've got someone else wants to call in. I'll I'll, t I'll leave the lines open after Heidi, Tony. All right? That's what I'll do. <laughs> That's what I'll do. Anyway, how are you, Heidi? What are you calling in for, my sweetheart? I'm all right, love. I've just did you ever watch the bill? Say the bill. The bill. Um, yeah. not not religiously. I kind of dipped in and out of that a bit. I thought it was an excellent series. And yeah, I couldn't well, understand why they took it off. It didn't make a sense at all to me. That I think I think it because they they um why did the bill finish? I think it was because they they right now the um actual they had something to do with the television company. What Thames? Yeah, I think so. Well, they were still they they lost the London contract Thames, but they yeah. continued to make the program for for the network afterwards. Um I don't know why they took that off because I thought it was quite a popular program. It was a popular mm. program. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and it was well made that. Yeah, and there was some in there that I really thought were really good at being police officers, like yeah. like Tony Stamp. Yes, yes. I mean, we've had some good. We've had, yeah, we've had some good police programs on over the years. Uh, my favourites were Z Cars. Now that is going back some years. Well, before my time. Yeah. Uh, well, there was also Dixon of Doc Green. Da, 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 that was really old school policing, that was. And also, there was an excellent programme called Juliet Bravo. Wonderful yeah, theme tune. Her. Do you remember the theme tune to that? Not offhand, no. Oh, let me play it for you. I've got that here. So I've got it all oh, here, God, you know. No, no, you and your jingle, please. No. Hey? You and your jingles, no. Oh, I love theme music. So I love I theme know music. You do. I've got to find it now. Hang on. Juliet uh -oh. Bravo. <laughs> Wonderful piece I, of music. I can't listen to it on my headphones then. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. You'll be able to hear this. Coming up now. Just a moment, please. Here it goes. Here it is. You'll remember it when you hear it. Ready? I don't know what I did. It's in my ear. Remember that? You remember that, don't you? It used to be on Saturday yeah. nights on BBC One Colour. That, um, 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 Peter Classical Music, what is it? Uh, it's what? It's, it, it's, um, that's classical music. Classical music? Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. I don't think it's classical music, but it's an excellent theme tune. So we've had some good police programmes on over the yeah, years. Yeah. Uh, Dino's just written and he said, do you remember The Gentle Touch with Jill Gascoigne? Do you remember The Gentle Touch? Actually, that, that's another reason why I wanted to call in. Dino, I have the answer to your problem. Ah. Right. Is this if the insurance car, thing? If you buy a car, 
right, and you get insured, and then you take another passenger in your car, you're, you you are insured for that for that passenger. They don't need to claim on them insured because they are in your car and you are insured. Well, even if he if he hasn't got his license, even, full license. Yeah, because. It, because he's insured, because he's already got insurance, he is insured. As long as he gets his insurance before he gets in the car, right. then he's fine. OK. You can't drive without insurance. OK, well, I can't say, because I don't know the answer to that, but that's 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 your uh, that's your opinion on that, so thank you very much for that. Uh, and, and he has heard you say that. Yeah, no, literally, so... It's right... Yeah. But, you know, you can't claim on two types of insurance. That's I find it all very confusing. It's all a rip-off, Heidi, all this insurance lark, isn't it, my darling? It'd be like, say if I crashed into your car. Yes. Well, I hope that's not going to happen soon. No. I've just had it fixed. <laughs> my nephew fixed it. Did you see the videos last week? About what? Oh, my nephew fixing my car because it had a little dent in it. Actually, it wasn't a crash. I, I've, I, I stored something in my garage, and I think I've done it when I've got because it's very tight fit into the garage. I mean, literally, there's about an inch and a half either side when I go into the garage. Yeah, uh, once you're I in have, the door, I you've thought, got. I was listening to you before you left there, and yes. I know all about it. Well, he fixed my car. I don't want it to be banged into again, Heidi. <laughs> No mind, darling. How's your life? All right? My life's not bad. Well, I tell you what I love about you. You, you always make me laugh when you say, keep up, dear. Well, they do. people don't keep up with it, dear. <laughs> they don't. Oh, they go along at the speed of a snail. Or I tell you what makes me laugh is when some people ring in and say, all right, well, what are you talking about? Well, have you been listening? No, I just thought I'd ring up. Hello? What planet are you on? Or, you know, I start a show and I might say, hello and welcome, and then the phone starts ringing. Well, I haven't even opened the lines yet. What can you have to talk about that I haven't brought into the show yet? And then, then it, and, and you know how the conversation's going to, hello, hello, well, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Well, why have you called in? Well, I thought I'd just call in. Well, what have you got to just say? What have you got to say? Well, I just wanted to say hello. Well, what's the point of that? <laughs> 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 Heidi, you're a diamond. Thanks for calling in, darling. All right. Hey. Thanks for calling in, Heidi. Bye, bye, oh, love. Bye. Have a nice evening. Lovely, Heidi. There in uh, in Fulham. Now, did uh, I've, I've cleared the line for you there? If you want to give us a call quickly, Tony. All right. Uh, Tony says, "Hi, Chris, my sweetheart. How are you, sweetheart? Sweet Caroline." Da, da, da. Yes. John says, only the learner driver needs to be insured. The instructor is responsible to make sure that they are insured. Ah, so there, there, there's a, quite a few people saying there, Dino, that it's only you that needs to be insured. 0208144377. Uh, Tony, if you want to call in nice and quickly before I close, and many lines, OK? Kevin says you're showing your age. What, with those wonderful TV programmes? I used to, I've got Juliet Bravo on DVD downstairs. Yes, I purchased one of the series. You know, as usual with my DVDs, what happens is that I buy these DVDs and then they get put on the show and they stay there forevermore, you know. Years and years remained in their cellophane paper. Yes, yeah, so there we are. Um, good. Right, well, we're due today's... I think, um, actually, I think Tony might have disappeared. Perhaps Tony has disappeared and isn't with us now. So we're going to do today's birthdays and then uh, we're disappear. Just a moment. Where's that blooming phone number? There we are. Just a second. There we are. And push that one there. Push that one there. Here's today's birthdays, gang. Now, remember, these are today's birthdays, and it's Tuesday today. Happy birthday today to all-round good guy who I worked with for about a year at uh, Belushi's in Camden Town. Nathan is 25 years old. On this Tuesday. Happy birthday to you, Nathan. Uh, Cindy McMillan is 27 years old today. Happy birthday, Cindy. Uh, Ray Russell, 48 years old today. Younger than me, Ray. Happy birthday, Ray. Elaine Welland is 68 today. Happy birthday, Elaine. Uh, Danny Joe Stephen, 35 years old today. Happy birthday, Danny. I used to have a body like that. 
It's a few years ago. Not many years ago, actually. But I, my body sort of kind of went all outwards a few years ago. I don't know why. I think it's the biscuits. I still want those biscuits. I might go to the to the um, uh, to the petrol station and get some biscuits. Although that will involve a half hour walk, well, about a twenty minute walk either way. Is it worth it? That's the question. But then I'm getting exercise, aren't I? So I can I can say I've had the biscuits and exercised as well at the same time. You see, that's the thing. Lines are now closed. You've missed your chance, Tony. I'm sorry, you've missed your chance. Um, let me just um, where's that mouse gone? Let me just close that. Close those phones. Quit. And closed. You'll get an answer phone now if you're calling, OK? Uh, Roger Dav Devonport is 59 years old today. Well, you don't look 59. Look how fit you are. How do you manage that? Happy birthday, Roger. Alan Davey. Are you still doing your mobile discos, Alan? Happy birthday, Alan Davey. Used to come into uh, Belushi's in Hammersmith when I was there some years ago. That was a great place to work. Great place. I really enjoyed myself there. Jonathan Bloomfield is 43 years old on this Tuesday. Paul Duncan. Happy birthday, Paul Duncan. Looking nice in that photograph. And Paul Newman's birthday today as well. So let's sing the song and then we're going to disappear. And uh, I might go out and get biscuits. I might just go have a cup of tea. I don't know yet. I can't decide. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. There you go. All right, so if it's your birthday today, uh, have a lovely time. Of course, we're nearly into Thursday. Uh, I'll probably be back with you tomorrow morning at some point. All right, I reckon tomorrow morning is a, a good time to be back with you again because I'm not swimming at the moment. We haven't got the swimming pool open. Um, uh, they're doing a bit of a refurbishment in the sport. Not the swimming pool, but the sports centre in general is having a refurb and uh, they have to close the pool for some reason. So no swimming. So I think I'll be with, back with you sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, Heidi says it's her birthday on the 28th. Well, as long as you've got that set, um, Heidi, that will come up on my birthday list, my darling. All right. That's it today. Thank you very much, boys and girls. Um, tomorrow night, that's Wednesday night. Wednesday night, I'll be hosting uh, the quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar. That's in Upper Street, Islington, OK? So quiz night tomorrow night at the King's Head Theatre Bar, Upper Street, Islington. Starts at 8.30. That's every Wednesday. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 10.30. Hope you can join me there. Apart from that, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Well, it's only about half an hour left in it of, uh, of Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Cheerio now.